Okay, hi everyone. This is a video walkthrough of your Grappa Standard Controls mapping project. So, so far, hopefully, you've gone through the diagram and verified that you understand all the different components in the GPRS environment. And hopefully, you've done your network map and you've found out exactly what all of the different parts of the system are in your network. You should have done the mapping of your AAA so that you know how authentication and authorization are done. You should have done postpaid billing assurance so that you understand where do the SCDRs and GCDRs come from, what are the rules for their generation, and where do they go within your system. And you should have done the mapping for the prepaid. What prepaid activities happen from the SGSN, what one happens from the GGSN, and how does that all put together. So assuming that you've done all of this mapping, now we're ready to look at the Grappa standard controls for prepaid and to see just how good or bad the risk is of revenue loss in your environment. So to begin with, we take a look at our domains, the coverage domains. We're going to look at the access architecture. How do people get authenticated on the network and are the controls in place? We're going to look at the service delivery architecture. How does authorization happen? And do we have controls over the delivery of data services. We're then going to look at several different aspects of the billing and assuring the billing. We're going to look at GPRS traffic balancing. Are we sure that all packets are being accounted for and billed properly? We're then going to look at the standard billing functions, rating assurance, rate assurance, and then specific to prepaid systems, assuring the wallets that all the wallets are functioning with integrity. We're then going to look at the account management for adjustments, movements, and um, management of the balances within the prepaid billing system. So let's look at each one. Let's look at all the different GPRS access controls. So the first process you should have already done, and that is putting together the network topology map. So step one, we create a network diagram. We find out what all the different units are. We get an inventory of the SGSNs and the GGSNs. We get a definitive list of the APNs. We get an inventory of the boundary routers, the border routers that are between us and our GPRS environment in the outside world. We then do the legal mapping and illegal route mapping exercises. We have a separate video for that. You then want to assure and secure that each GSN domain coming in and coming out is secure. And that is, find all of the APNs, find all of the outside routes through the boundary routers, find all of the inside routes, and make sure that there are logins and password securities on each, that the routing tables are secured, and that there are firewalls that have been tested and assured. Given the network topology assurance, we could then move to the network inventory assurance. That is where we take each network element and verify that they are registered and their logical and physical security is sound. And then we verify that we have change management so that if and when the network engineers make changes to this environment, we get a notification. So that is what we call the network assurance phase. We then want to do specific assurance on the SGSN and the GGSN. Number one, peg count assurance. How are we sure that all packets going in and out of each SGSN and GGSN is accounted for? Now, how do we do that? Pretty much the same way we would do it in the MSC environment. Either we do test transfers where we take, for example, a 20 megabot file put it through and then see if the SCDRs and GCDRs actually report an accurate count. We also want to do peg count controls against the ratios. We want to be counting the packets coming in and out of each router and make sure that it balances out. The biggest challenge here is figuring out some way to get two separate data points that cross-check each other and verify that in fact all packets are being accounted for. Once we've got the peg count assurance taken care of, we can then look at our HLR synchronization and make sure that all calls managed by the GGSN and SGSN are correctly treated as postpaid or prepaid 
as per what the HLR says. We do that with synchronization just as we do in voice. We then want to take a look at the SGSN and the GGSN CDR generation tables. Each one of these devices has rules for when CDRs will be generated, which ones will or will not be done. Until you can take a look at those rules, there's no way you know for sure whether you're getting the right GGSN and SGSN CDRs or not. Interestingly enough, for example, in the Cisco GGSN, there is a rule for which APNs will generate CDRs and which ones will not. Clearly, that is a big opportunity for fraud and revenue loss, where network engineers either purposely or accidentally forget to include all of the APNs in the list of which APNs should be used to generate CDRs. We then also have the change management around these settings to make sure that when anybody touches a GGSN or an SGSN that we're going to get a notification. Finally we have the authorization and authentication around IP address assignment. You should have identified where the IP addresses are assigned from and verified that it is in fact working and secure. And last but not least verification and security on APNs. Who generates APNs? When is that authorized? How do I know for sure that nobody has generated APNs that I'm not aware of? So this will give us our authentication controls for the GPRS environment.